How are you doing? Pretty good. I'm so just uh, in my beautiful Chicago hotel room that I've made an enormous mess of. So that's all right. You were Absolutely. here for two weeks. You can do that. It's all good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Uh, for all those who are just tuning in, thanks for joining us. We are chatting with Krista Curry <laughs> from Annie, who plays Lily St. Regis, one of the sidekicks. So. If you have any questions for Krista, go ahead and put them in the comments. We'll do as many as possible. As many as possible. Thank you. But first of all, welcome to Chicago. I, I've have been a couple times, been Chicago and before? both times it was so cold. And honestly, this is kind of an improvement because both times I here in January, and so I'm having a much better time already. Um, I've already frequented the Nordstrom Rack, got this really cute jacket, so I'm having a great time in Chicago. <laughs> so good. You're coming at a fantastic time because this coming we're weekend going. we're dying the river green. So good, so good. Um, we have, well, we have so much to chat about, but first I want to go back to the beginning of your journey as an actress and what really yes. sparked your so love for acting. So I actually acting. started in community theater when I was like six years old. Um, it was something that my dad and I did together. And so we did a ton of plays together in community theater when I was growing up in uh, Gig Harbor, Washington. Um, and then it was something that my entire family uh, got involved with at some point or another. And then from there, I just kind of always knew that I was going to be an actor. There wasn't ever really another path that I explored. So it was just always something I was going to do. So good. Well, I was, as, as I was scrolling through your, your Instagram feed, I would love to talk about your, your journey as an actress, because one of the things that I saw was that you, I you worked did. as a princess. As a uh, princess. No, this, this wasn't Art? at, this wasn't with Disney, but I, um, princess oh. parties and so in Seattle I got to um, do princess parties and people would hire me to come and you know be a princess for their kids and it was honestly like the best job I will ever have um, you know people kind of make fun of being like a birthday clown I was I was a birthday princess and it was just the best because the kids think that you're real and so doing this show is actually something that has been really magical because little little girls will come up to the stage door, especially, and sometimes they're dressed as Annie. And um, so it's just so special to get to meet them. And, you know, I love meeting the, the audience members of all shapes and sizes, but the, but the tiny children is something that just really, oh, it just makes your day every time. But, and you work with just a bunch of phenomenal young actresses in these or roles can you tell me a, a little bit about you know traveling the it's world it's been with, really, with these really awesome amazing kids. um they're all around 12 most of them are 12 um but they range in age from 10 to 15 and they're just the coolest kids ever they're so talented um and we've made this friendship uh with with these kids and you know just just a couple weeks ago, we had this snowball fight that one of the moms orchestrated, and it was, it was one of the best nights of tour. And there's just something about seeing the tour and seeing the industry through these kids' eyes. It sounds so trite, like I'm saying it, I'm like making fun of myself, but like, it's so true that these kids are amazing. And so getting to experience it with them is something that's so, so special. It's so fantastic in it, and you are fantastic in it as well. And we had a lot of questions come in about the process of become or getting on a tour as an actor, and specifically, like, what advice do you have for going on tour? Like, specifically, you know, working through yeah. The so process? this was this was sort of different for me. I had my first round of auditions was uh, through video. And um, then my second round was in person. They had a dance call um, that I was terrible at, but here I am. Um, and so it was it was kind of great for me because at the time I was um, in Washington State with the pandemic. And so I was able to film my video from home um, and then just come in for the callback. But usually they're all in person um, in New York, usually. Um, but right now we're actually doing an open call on Saturday for the orphans. So if any kids are watching who want to be on the show, um, this is a good opportunity. But um, my appointment was through my agent. I know that everybody has kind of a different path to getting there. Um, a lot of tours do have open calls and you can find these on Actors Access or Playbill usually. Awesome. And this is not your first time playing uh -huh. Lily St. Regis. You, you were in 
not specifically the tour, but you've been an Annie before. And what made you really say, you know what? Let's, well, let's you know, go that's, that's just let's a role that. that I've always loved doing. Um, and ever since I saw the movie when I was a kid, Bernadette Peters, Tim Curry, Carol Burnett, like I knew that that was my role. And I've always, I've always had a good handle on what my type is. And so, um, so I always knew that Lily was a role I wanted to play. And so that was actually, speaking of my dad, that's actually the last show that I did with my dad. Um, we did uh, Rent and Civic Theater in the Seattle area. I was Lily St. Regis and he played a number of uh, character ensemble roles. And so I always wanted to revisit this. And I remember when I got the email from my agent, um, I saw Annie in the subject line, you know, you have an audition for Annie. And I was like, Oh, please be Lily. Please be Lily. And it was Lily. I was like, yes, <laughs> my agent gets me entirely. So I would love to dig into being typecast as you just mentioned, because I read in an interview you did with an Omaha publication about leaning into your typecast. And as an actor, maybe you have to question, okay, do I lean into the, the typecast who that I'm being given, or do I try and find another way? And you say in this in in this interview how you lean into it. Can you tell us a little bit more about that's such typecast a good question. It's actually your... something I'm very passionate about is um, knowing who you are and being true to your type. Um, it's just another you know it's an actor way of being true to yourself, you know. And so knowing exactly who you are because. Like, there are roles that I could do. Like, I'm fine at playing an ingenue. I, I was a good princess at the parties, you know? But it's clear that I am a ridiculous person, and I have this voice. And so it's something that just is more natural to me is those character roles. And so I like doing those character roles. And so I'm very lucky in that I love my type. I love the little box that I've been put in. I have no desire to get out. I, I love my type. I'm so lucky to be get to do these kind of roles. But I think it's really important to know who you are. You know, Julia Nicole Hunter, who plays Grace, is the most luminous person. She's like a magnificent beauty. She walks into a room and everyone just, oh, you know, and she's the perfect ingenue. She's the perfect Grace Barrel. And so she really understands her type, you know, and so I wouldn't go in for Grace and she wouldn't go in for Lily. And if I went in for Grace, I wouldn't have booked it. And I think if she would have gone in for Lily, she might not have booked that, you know, so you have to kind of lean into what you do better that nobody else does quite like you do. You know? Absolutely. And I saw the show last night. You were hilarious in it. You were so fantastic in it. I have to know, what is your favorite part of the show? Whether like whether whether, whether, whether that be like a scene that, that that you were specifically in or that you um, my favorite scene to do wings? is definitely Easy Street. Um, you know, Nick Bernardi and I so Nick Bernardi plays Rooster and uh, he and I are just best friends. And so being in any scene with him is so much fun. Um, and getting to do Easy Street with Stephanie Londino as Miss Hannigan, and she's a genius. And the three of us have so much fun. And it's just such, it's such an iconic song. And like I said, I've always wanted to do it. And so to get to be like the Lily for this generation of kids, like Bernadette Peters was for me and will continue to be forever. Like that's, that's really, really cool. Um, to watch from the wings. I mean, I'm a sucker for anything with the dog. <laughs> We're not in the wings and the dog is on stage, but it's it's hard not to watch a little bit. Um, and then I get to watch um, the kids do uh, You're Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile every night because I make my entrance right after that. And so I just get to watch them do their cartwheels and I'm so obsessed with them. And so like, I just think they're geniuses. And so I, I watch that every night and I try to be there right at the top so I can just watch them because they're they're wonderful. And when you are on stage, it's so evident that like you are really present in this role. And we have a question about your confidence um, being on stage. And do you ever you know it was funny fright? because I don't. Um, I get really terrified for auditions, um, like terror. Uh, I hate auditioning. I I love self tapes. I'm so glad we're kind of still in the self tape land because I get very, very nervous for auditions. Um, but I don't get nervous for the shows. But our first night in Chicago, the house lights were up and they wouldn't go off. It was some kind of technical difficulty and they were they were up. And so seeing the audience, I was nervous. And it was the first time for Annie that I've been nervous. But 
you could see them and you could see their reaction and you could see when they weren't laughing and you could see when they were and it and it made me nervous and it made me start thinking like maybe i get nervous for auditions because i can see that <laughs> but so it, it kind of threw my mindset for loop because i was like i don't get nervous for shows anymore but i i got nervous just the, just the other night so yeah but you just kind of you kind of push through um one of one of my good friends in the ensemble liana rubin um she's a genius she's one of the character performers um she was talking just the other night about overcoming stage fright and how she's learned to do that and how it almost made her quit the business and then she decided that she was gonna push through so if you have more questions about that i think liana rubin is the person to talk to if you ever want to if the person who asked that question wants to chat with her so even if you don't deal with a lot of stage fright what makes you feel most confident you know what today's a <laughs> preparation really good day. unfortunately uh <laughs> you know just knowing that you know it and knowing that you trust your scene partners as much as i trust my scene partners um you know having warmed up that day all of that preparation that's what's gonna, that's what's going to carry you through so that in case you do kind of black out from fear <laughs> you have that that to fall back on kind of Okay, we have to I know, love do you the, like playing the villain? <laughs> I would play the villain every <laughs> single time. I got to do um, The Three Musketeers, and I was Milady, and she's kind of the the villain of the melodrama, and so I got booed most nights, and it was so fun. Um, we haven't gotten booed yet, and Nick and I would be thrilled, so if you come, feel free to boo us. <laughs> Well, let me tell I, I, I was there. I gave you a standing ovation, of course. I, um, well, another thing I want to touch on is that yeah, you are Thank you so much. Congratulations. And now, uh, let's talk about just being in a long distance relationship. And do you have any advice for other actors and other, you know, people who work in theater and are, you know, traveling across the country I'm and the so partners in another place. I'm so glad this up because he's my favorite topic of conversation. And so I'm always trying to work him into the conversation and you just made it so easy. Um, so yeah, so my unbelievable husband, Eric Ratton, he is also an actor and he is on the international tour of West Side Story right now. And so he's in France and I'm in Chicago and that sounds so cool and it is so cool, but it's so hard. Like it's so hard. So it's like, it's so exciting to be able to be like, oh yes, well I'm on this, he's on West Side Story. And like, that's so neat. But being apart this long, it's so hard, you know? And especially with the time zone difference, I have no idea what time it is there right now, but I'm sure he's watching Eric. Um, but so it's, it's a lot of FaceTime. You know, it's a lot of FaceTime. It's a lot of just being on top of, you know, if, cause I like to sleep late, but as soon as I wake up, I have to call him because otherwise I'll miss him, you know? And so it's, it's really trying to be on top of things, but it can be so hard. And to know that we're doing this for, you know, our, our goals and our careers and the fact that he supports me me so much and he wants me to be here and I want him to be there because I support him so much and and we're doing this for a dream and for our ambitions like that's really really cool but it's hard you know there's just no getting around the fact that it's really hard absolutely well just know <laughs> that we are rooting for you too we are all the way um well we are nearing the end of our time here but to wrap us up what do you hope folks take away after seeing Annie? I mean, it's such yeah. an up uplifting show, but when people walk out of the theater, what do you oh, hope gosh, that's such a good question. Um, I mean, I leave with admiration for these kids every single night. And again, that sounds so ridiculous, but it's so, so true. Like these kids are so amazing and see, and this is a story about a little girl who literally changes the world. <laughs> and, you know, it may not be, completely nonfiction. Um, but that idea of how hope and optimism can sustain you through these rough times. And we've had some rough times recently. And so, you know, learning something from Annie and this incredible little girl and, to, you know, these incredible actresses who are playing these incredible little girls, it's, it's really a special thing. So, um, and also like, I really enjoy shows that are just fun. 
And <laughs> sometimes Annie is just fun. You know, there's kids up there, there's dogs, you know, they're doing their cartwheels. And it's just, it's just a good time. So I just really hope that people can come to this and leave having had a wonderful time. Krista, thank you so much for sharing your time and talent with us. We're so grateful. Um, for all those who are watching, come out. Come see Annie. It's here until March 19th only at the Cadillac Palace Theater. Get your tickets, BroadwayChicago.com. We have $25 lottery, $49 rush. There's all the options for you to come. If you want a feel-good show, this is it. This company is just fantastic. Come see Krista. She'll make you laugh. It'll be really, really awesome. Um, Krista, thank you so much again. And you know, your time in Chicago. Well, it's been so great. So I'm excited about it. So Thank good. You so Thank much. you all so much.